Okay, remember that people who know that I'm right are covertly changing my voice. They're changing the sound of my voice. Now, Dionysus is a very important deity to understand. He's a demon. His name is said to come from Dios, another name for Zeus, meaning Dionysus is a young Zeus. And if we study Greco-Roman mythology carefully, we see that that argument is sound. That is the main logical assumption here. Because Pan, for example, his name means all for all the Greco-Roman deities. And at least one interpretation, Hades is said to be Zeus's alter ego. So logically, Poseidon is his alter ego, Eros is like his young form, and Dionysus is his kind of young man form. So Eros is like little little horny devil kid, Dionysus is a young devil. Okay, no offense to anybody, these are the facts. I'm even part white, I'm not racist, I just tell the truth. So we see with the word grape, you have the letter G, which who is the earth deity um, to the Romans, right? Satan said to lead the whole world astray, right? You know, don't conform to the world, don't love the world, 1 John 2, 15. So you have the letter G, and then you have the word rape. G, rape. If that's not bad enough, the word drapes, right? Drapes, or drape, de-rape. And of course, prepare is pre-rape scrambled, and compare is mock rape or come rape scrambled. Now again, if you're confused about the word play, ask questions. It's been acknowledged by experts into the occult that the word play is sound and the occult overlaps with greco western occult overlaps with western greek and roman mythology also norse mythology and you have celtic stuff and druids and all kinds of stuff that they like to dabble in and kind of mix together so when we see jesus he's like an amalgamation there's characteristics of apollo there's characteristics of of zeus himself you know, dionysus there's characteristics of zagreus okay there's characteristics of Serapis, and Serapis is a very important deity to remember as well. So to understand why I am Christ, you have to understand what Christ is and what Christ isn't. The things you've been told about, by, you know, you've been told by people who are Luciferians, right? They put the fairy in Luciferian, okay? They have a kind of fairy construct. They don't want you to picture the reality, the intense reality, right? Natural and supernatural, the essence of natural, the reality of the situation. So you've got to ask yourself, who's God in reality? Who's the son in reality? What did Jesus as a character in the story say when he was questioned about his authenticity? He pointed to Psalm 82, right? The one who are set apart, the scripture came through. How much more the one who's set apart as the greatest warrior of all time? And then they tried to stone him and he used his agility and footwork and he slipped away in the crown. That is the truth in reality. The fairy interpretation is he kind of, you know, disappeared or something magically. But the Bible makes it clear that it's figurative. See my video on the Bible is figurative. Okay, Jesus said he speaks figuratively in the Bible. And there's going to come a time where he speaks plainly. And he's speaking, right, the word, the spoken word. We see in Jeremiah 8, 8, I believe it is, right? The lying pen of the scribes. The scribes are lying and it's figurative. And the Christian cults made a deal with the Greek and Roman cults in Rome, the Greco-Roman cults, to kind of synchronize, to amalgamate, to combine. And this is also in mainstream history, mind you. You had places where they would go and they would pray to the Greek gods and they'd go to the, to the basement and they'd pray to the Christian um, god, if you will. And we know by the works, are people acting more like pagans? And they say that they built this city on rock and roll or Christianity. When Lenny Kravitz made the song American Woman, was she a Christian woman or a rock and roll pagan? Is the government ruled by real moral people or are they pagans? Do they express power over the churches? Yes. Do the churches pretend that they don't in the, in the kind of tradition of being wolves in sheep's clothes? Yes. I mean, there's no other way to look at it. I'd love to hear your counter argument, okay? And it's probably going to be some trance-based bullshit. I'm sorry you feel that way, brother. I'm in like a trance, man. Okay, that's stupid. You see in the left, right, middle, every church you see, they deal in trances, right? Minister and to administer. Church with the same root term as circus. Kirk, Kirkos, a circus, a circle. A circle of thieves. A cabal. A group of thieves, right? And I'm sure you all know them right these days because the evidence is overwhelming. 
Look at them and ask yourself, are they gayish? They're trying to confuse you about what it means to be straight. But really think about it. Gay means kind of silly, goofy. Are they Greekish? Are they Romanish? Are they Anglo-Saxon? Are they English-like? You know, who are these people? Why is a church called the Church of England? It's supposed to be of God, not just of a nation. We see religions in every country, are they not often ethnic heavy, national heavy, right? Buddhism, we think of Chinese, Tibetans, what have you. Shinto, Japanese, Hindus and Johns, India, Native American religions, what have you. These might be very nice and very friendly people, but their religions, aren't they ethnic heavy? Aren't they racially motivated religions? Okay, and so it is in Rome. They're racially motivated. They're motivated by the senators and the governing class lines. They have statues there. And they did the same Roman tradition of depicting their quote-unquote God in the statue. Okay? The statue of Dionysus and Zeus are based on family lines. They did that same thing with Serapis and with their false image of Christ and their false images of Christ. They're a bunch of Nordic-looking Jews and stuff like this. Okay, so now in regards to Dionysus. Dionysus is basically a deity of ritual madness, religious ecstasy, lying about things like God, fertility, wine, grapes, the harvest. There's a lot of connections, you know. The wine and, and communion, you know, mass, okay. The vineyard of the Lord, the wine press, the grapes. It's very much... Um, connected to Dionysus. In fact, in some versions of the Bible, you see words like Hades being used and someone named Apollyon, okay, the destroyer, aka Abaddon. This is not a coincidence, right? The same kind of mysteries that went into the Greco-Roman mysteries that ultimately come from Africa were there in the Middle East. I mean, in fact, during the rape of Europa, okay, Zeus had taken Europa to Crete. And we see that Phoenicia factors in and so on and so forth. Okay. To Crete, which is an island that's not in Greece. It's not in Rome. It's it's the island of Crete. It's not the city of Rome. It's not Athens. It's not Sparta. It's Crete. Somewhere else. And we see that, you know, there's Egyptian connections to the Greek and Roman religion as well. Harpocrates. Okay. Um... The ferryman, they do some some kind of ritual in Egypt that's connected to Greece. It's been a while, but there's a lot of connections here. There's a lot of stuff. I don't think that it's worth anyone's time to become an expert in Greco-Roman mythology. Okay? You know, but there's connections. There's connections with, like, every religion in the world, really. You know, every known religion, there's some kind of connection to understanding the Bible. But that goes back to the tree of knowledge, right? It's unnecessary. Okay, what is the truth? The way is the truth? Not understanding all the games they're playing with their jigsaw puzzle around the world. So I could explain why I'm Christ without talking about Dionysus and so on and so forth. Okay. But I think some of you, when you see this, you know for sure that I'm the only one telling the truth. Okay. Other people are in a state of ritual madness, religious ecstasy, insanity. You know, they drink and they work themselves into a frenzy. Uh, in the Dionysian rituals and mysteries, as the story goes. But there's other ways to go crazy, right? They're drunk with, with pride, drunk with psychology, okay? You know, they're in a frenzy where the whole world is suffering and they're in some greedy nation and they're, you know, even if they're middle class, they're kind of, you know, they're kind of um, taking their share of the, the pirate pie, if you will. As people are starving to death all over the world, 9 million people starving to death, 3 million children every year in the world. People are being drugged and abused, so they're not like a free feeding frenzy. Like They're like vampires. And vampires and werewolves in mythology connect to the Greco-Roman mythology, right? When you think about it, it's like, duh, right? This is kind of Western myth and lore. Now, they're feeling me pretty bad, so I'm having trouble speaking. I'm just going to end the video here. Oh, so real quickly, rape is key here. Right, Dionysus rapes a nymph, he's a young Zeus, so he's also connected to all the Zeus rapes, and there's many, many, many Zeus rapes. Okay, and rape by deception is key. Zeus changes form, right? Psychology, right? Psyche is a Greek deity. Her consort is Eros, erotic desire. So the psychology that is there is there to allow for rape by deception, rape using 
subtle coercion, using misdirection, using confusion, right? It's a big one. Set is also a deity of chaos and confusions and storms. And so is Zeus, okay? And they're, you know, they're counterparts. So the sex you see going on in society, who's dating who? Sometimes it's an attractive female dating some kind of old guy or something. Why is she so dumb that she thinks that a stupid purse is more important than her not sleeping with some old, you know, rape by deception demon, so to speak, a bad person. And a demon is said to be a skilled performer, right? Theater arts. Dionysus is also associated with the theater, okay? That's key, right? The theater, the propaganda, the psychology, the ritual madness, okay? And Eros is, is you know, his good friend, right? And it's another form of himself. And one way to look at it is he's a, he's a separate component in the spirit of the West. Another way to look at it is he's, you know, the younger version of the, a governing class person, you know, his young self telling him, hey, you should take this, you know, do something wrong and so on and so forth. So rape and plunder, right, skull and bones, pirates, it's part of the greater culture. And key in this is people being cowards who are too scared to stand up against these oppressors, to stand up and tell the truth, right, the way, the truth, and the life, the gate, the way out, to come into the divine order, to rally to me. Okay, that's why it says in Revelation, right, Revelers like Dionysus reveling, right? You know, the back also called Bacchus, right? The Bacchanalia, this kind of, you know, ritual of people running around beating each other up, raping, anything goes as they say. Anyway, so it says outside the gates are the cowardly, those who practice falsehood, psychology, theater arts, acting, pretending. That's falsehood. So when I say I'm the Christos, the anointed son of God, the top martial arts ever, it's in reality. I'm not Dionysus. I'm far above being a worm like that. Not Zeus. Not Zagreus or Serapis. Okay, I'm talking about reality. Not some sick pedophile's rape game. And Zeus raped Ganymede. He was a kid. Became like the archetype of pedophilia. And he did in the form of an eagle, which is also a symbol of Zeus. It's a symbol of America. Symbol of uh, Rome. Okay, connected to Babylon and so on and so forth. 